More than 20 years ago, following the tragic loss of the hull trawler, the Gull, the government quickly made two things absolutely clear. The Gull, they said, was not a spy ship, and the British trawler fleet was not involved in any way in intelligence gathering. Yet dispatches has established that the second of those claims at least was completely untrue. This man was a scientist who worked for British intelligence in secret laboratories in Aldermaston. He was a real-life Q. I was working on um, aerial systems, designing aerial systems for clandestine operations. I then moved on to the digital side of the design, and we were designing electronics for use by agents in the field. I was aware that other members of the um, laboratory staff, in fact, who were scientists, were in fact um, adopting different roles and travelling up through Norway, up to the top end of Norway, towards the Barents Sea, where I understand that they were in fact um, disguised, if you like, as fishermen to avoid detection. The trouble is, of course, I mean, it was quite dangerous, particularly for civilian trawlermen who might get caught up in it. It was dangerous, yes, yes. I, I think the, the risk is that, um, and this is fairly typical, I think, of the British government, that you do tend to be on your own in these situations if you're caught. Clearly, any civilian fisherman involved in a covert operation with military personnel would be at considerable risk. Yet we have established that such operations were a regular occurrence. We've pieced together details of just one such mission and spoken to the men involved. I was a naval wireless operator, radio operator, uh, specialising in interception and analysis of what I heard. The particular language that I specialised in was Russian, but others of my colleagues specialised in other languages. I travelled to the Barents Sea in a submarine, first of all, on six different occasions. Uh, I also travelled uh, in a trawler, hull trawler, the Arctic Galliard, uh, celebrated my birthday in the Barents Sea in 1966. A civilian trawler? A civilian trawler. I was out of naval uniform. You were effectively acting as a spy in the Barents Sea? Effectively, yes. The trip lasted more than three weeks, and on board, the spymaster himself, Commander Brooks. In Hull, we found the mate on that trip, Jimmy Williams. We were told, more or less, the day we landed, that the next trip, Brokey was coming with us, and uh, we were on a guaranteed earnings for the trip, so paid by whoever, whatever government department. There was a group of four people went on the trawler. There was a naval commander, I believe his name was Brooks. Brookey was what he was called. There was uh, somebody from the Foreign Office, and then there was a colleague of mine. Um, we joined the trawler in Hull. We had some special equipment installed on there. And during the trip along the Barents Sea, we intercepted, recorded, noted down anything that uh, appeared to be of interest. There was Russian-speaking operators, whatever you like to call them. They were on permanent listening watch all the time. It was a fishing trip in all respects, really. Uh, the crew were fishing for fish. We were fishing for whatever radio intercept we could find. You, and indeed the crew, were putting yourselves at risk. On reflection, yes, I think we probably were. Had, the, had we been stopped or had any Russians come on board, then certainly not just the four of us, but the other members of the crew might have been in some difficulty explaining what we were doing there. You, of course, were military. Yes. They were civilians. Yes. What do you think about it now when you look back at it? Well, absolute horror, because in a way, uh, I really would have liked to have known before we went what to do in the, uh, in the event of an emergency like that. What's your reaction to uh, government and Ministry of Defence denials that there was spying going on in these trawlers? It's not unusual in the intelligence business for denials of things to, that have happened to be uh, issued. And, you know, one of the old rules, I think, is deny, 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 admit nothing. Increasingly, though, the Ministry of Defence denials are left looking profoundly implausible, particularly so now that for the first time one of the trawler owners has decided to put the record straight. Owner of the Arctic Galliard and Managing Director of Boyd Lines, Tom Boyd. Were your ships involved in spying? Intelligence gathering 
and perhaps if you say spying, yes, they were. Some, some, some specific ships were at times, yes. How would something like the trip involving the Arctic Galliard be organised? Well, the, the, uh, the Navy would say they would like to be in a particular area, uh, and would we mind carrying some personnel with the ship? It depended very much uh, what the ship was fishing for. We had in the Galliard at the time a very, very successful place fisherman, and, and the place grounds were right off Mamansk. And so, and the ship was known by the Russians to be there place fishing regularly and, and probably uh, had been boarded in the past or certainly had a pretty good eye cast over her uh, to see that she was fishing and there was fish on deck, etc., etc. So um, the ships were chosen in that, in that manner. A bit risky, though. Yes, probably. Yeah. Yes. Um, no doubt there is some risk, yes.